Welcome, welcome, welcome to your weekly support meeting for the Genius. It's a great pleasure to be with you. All right, let's get started. This is Dr. Ariel Policano. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I actually went to medical college and uh, my education was in Portland, Oregon, which is where my practice is. And um, I use the genius in my practice. I think bioresonance tools are really important um, as a total picture for health practitioners. And they're really good for the person who may not be in the health field because they help to teach you about yourself and they give you an opportunity to check in and see what's going on internally before these things become huge problems. So it's a wonderful place for self-empowerment and it's a great opportunity for you to uh, become like a detective for your own health at a very low cost. So, you know, bioresonance um, equipment, at least here with the Genius, is something that costs um, anywhere from uh, $1,100 to $2,000 at the most. And then it's something that you have for the rest of your life to learn about how to use um, to the best advantage for yourself. And we try to help you here with education about natural health and about bioresonance to make this uh, a really positive experience for you, one where you continue to learn um, throughout your life and help yourself and your family to be healthier. So that's what this is all about and it's always a pleasure to be with you. And like I said, you can ask your questions, anything you want to about the genius, Today our topic is about blood sugar, so we're going to be talking about how to use the um, Genius to help you to balance your blood sugar. And I do have some of my customized panels here, and I'm going to be explaining to you how to get them. We actually have worked out a lot of the kinks with the Genius so that now it's really super simple to receive panels from me to you. Uh, we just need your email address, so it's so much easier than it used to be with the um, Quantum Infinity because it's all through the cloud and it really is lovely. Sorry, just give me one second to get that back on there. Uh, it really is lovely that it's just much, much easier than it used to be. All right, so we've got that there. Okay, I want to introduce you to my website. If you want to learn more about me, go to my website at awakentotalhealth.com. And, oops, sorry about that. You guys don't have the view there for a second. Sorry about that. So go to awakentotalhealth.com. Let me just show you that. I've got to take the picture off for just one more second there. Bear with me as we're getting started here. Good to have everybody along. There we go. All right, so let's... Um, do this again. Yeah, so let's go to awakentotalhealth.com because I just want to tell you about a couple other things that are going on this month. I'm having some new classes coming up and I'm going to be sending everybody who's on the call an email for tonight. You'll probably be receiving the email tonight or tomorrow morning. And this is the what I have coming up this month. I have a class called Kidney Wisdom kidney wisdom. So if you've ever wondered how the kidneys work or if your kidneys are at risk uh, for getting a disease or which you know much of that is on the rise, uh, kidney illness is um, increasing. More people are on dialysis. A lot of it is because of the overuse of things like Advil and other NSAIDs. Um, people don't know how to properly care for their kidneys or their kidney energy. There's a lot of things to this that I want to share with you. There's still $50 off this course starting on October 18th. And I'm going to be teaching you how to make special kidney tonics. So different tonics that will help you to take care of your kidneys, um, both from a Western perspective and from an Eastern perspective with Chinese medicine. So we're going to be talking about Ramania and um, Hoshu Wu and ginseng and different tonics that you can mix together to make special kidney concoctions to protect your kidney energy. And we know that the depletion of kidney energy is actually related to people losing their hair early in life or in midlife and also bone density. The deterioration of your bones is related to your kidney 
energy um, according to Chinese medicine. But we also want to talk about kidney cleansing and juniper berries and some of the things that really help you to clean your cleanse your kidneys so that you can eliminate waste more effectively and help the kidneys to stay completely healthy for, the, for a lifetime so that you don't lose traction with your kidneys. And I'm going to be telling you about actual lab tests that you can get, some of the most cutting edge lab tests. Um, you know, what is GFR? Every time you go for blood work, they give you glomerular filtration rate test. And they test uric acid. And they test um, other parameters of the kidneys that I can teach you about and tell you what to look for and what the optimal numbers are. So that's the first one, and that's going to start on October 18th. And then the second one is going to start around the same time. It's called uh, Mastering Ketosis. So if ketosis is something that you've ever worried about, uh, wondered about, how does it work? If you have any worries about your blood sugar, you're going to want to learn about ketosis. And my feeling is that as a population, we're actually making a huge transition to getting more of our calories from majority fat than protein and then carbs are going to be a very minor part of it. So if you're interested in learning about what is ketosis, what are the foods that you eat, um, is it safe, can you lose weight doing it, uh, what, what do you need to know, what does the science say about ketosis? You guys, if you do any nutritional counseling, if you help people, if you're involved in helping people to lose weight or preventing diabetes, you've got to learn about ketosis. Even if you don't go into a pure ketosis, if you go into a modified ketosis, you've got to learn what it is because it could save somebody from a heart attack, it could save somebody from a stroke, it could save somebody from Alzheimer's, and you know there are many great stories about that. Include we'll talk about uh, Mary Newport and her uh, work with her husband with Alzheimer's and coconut oil. You guys, once you get into ketosis, if you've had any issues with blood sugar, you will feel like a new person. You'll feel like you can think clearly. You'll have less inflammation. You'll have less aches and pains. You'll stay more healthy cognitively longer. So that is coming out of my newsletter about how to join the four-part class for ketosis. And then we have the kidney wisdom class. So I have really good classes coming up. They're actually separate from the genius. They're not particularly exactly related to the genius, but um, anything that you learn in my classes can be incorporated into your genius work um, practically seamlessly because once you know about natural health, you can test uh, natural health parameters on your genius, especially with my customized categories. So speaking of customized categories, um, Let's just talk about how to add customized categories to a client, and then you guys can um, hop in and ask your questions. I want to welcome people from all over the country and around the world. Uh, Kathy's joining us from Canada. Warm welcome. Thank you so much, Kathy. And Carol's here. Carol, I forget where you hail from, but I think you're in the mental health world. Love it. And um, Gigi is back. Uh, Gigi, we certainly would love to hear about your experience with the elephants and, and what happened. Uh, can't wait to hear about that. Sharon's joining us from Canada also, more on the eastern part of Canada. Sandy's here from Oklahoma. Thank you for joining us, Sandy. Pam's joining us from Florida. Warm welcome to you. Miss Pam and Janie is here. Um, Janet's. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for joining us. And Sophie joining us from the central part of California. Thank you so much for being here. Wendy. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Wendy, really good to have you along today. Thanks for being here. And if you tuned in, especially for blood sugar, don't worry. This information will not disappoint. We have really good information about managing blood sugar today. And we're going to be looking at a sample client's labs. Obviously, all personal information has been taken out here. But I've got really important things to tell you. And from this information, you may want to go to Direct Labs online, or you may want to pull your latest blood work and take a look at it. So let's talk about um, customized panels. And for those of you familiar with my website, you can actually order 10 customized panels at, at any time for $149. And now it's really easy to get them to you. So if you go to my website and you go to the search box and you just type in the word panels, you can easily find them here. 
you can buy 10 at a time, you can buy 100 for $9.99, it's totally up to you, and some of them were originally for the Quantum Infinity, so you can see them there, and we also have them now for the Genius, so you can check them out, see what I've got there, there's the one for the Genius, so I think I said $149, so if you want to shoot me a message and I'll give you the $50 discount, that says $199. So all these different topics are available. So if you've just gotten your genius and you want to expand the use of it a little bit and you want these types of topics and you want to test in these areas, then you can order any 10 panels you want or you can order the full set for $9.99. People who are on here who use these with the Quantum Infinity have found, oh, I need to change that picture, <laughs> have found that they got a lot of really great use from using the customized libraries and this is going to be a pretty good example of how to use the customized libraries. So in order to, if you ordered customized libraries from me, you'd want to add them to the particular client that you're working with. Say that this was a client that um, you wanted to test their blood sugar. What you do is you'd go onto the navigation bar at the top right, tap on the nav bar, go to libraries. These are where your customized libraries are, things that test things differently from the main part of the genius and you want to go to add to client and you want to test something in particular today I want to test blood sugar so I'm going to go scroll down here this would be like if you had the full set of panels from me you could just select from any of these topics and you just go blood sugar assessment, blood sugar frequency treatment, blood sugar treatment and then I'm going to hit OK and it's actually going to tell me zero out of three were associated because before this started I actually picked these three libraries then I'm going to hit OK then I go back here and you see I've already actually tested them so I do that through the section which I'll show you in a little while which is just called libraries I'll show you where that is so I, I chose blood sugar assessment and what I got was these different um, parameters so again just to review the colors red is above 600 600 uh, was 601 and above and 600 means there's hyperfunction, things are out of balance, things need to be balanced, but it's usually first stage. It's more superficial, it hasn't hit the really the chronic phase where and then it, it kind of goes underground. It's more deep and it becomes more pathological. The difference between red and blue, I wouldn't lose too much sleep over it, but I would just know that these things really need to be balanced. So if I zip all the way down here to the blue, again, these are things that are deeper, they tend to be more serious, and I want to distinguish today, because I'm going to be looking at the labs, between energetic and physical, and I'll talk about all of these. So some things are existing in bioresonance in the energy field, but they have not yet manifested yet in the physical world. So this gives you an incredible opportunity to balance things before they become problematic and we're going to see some differences between the labs um, and uh, between the labs and the bioresonance also labs are not hundred percent accurate so sometimes they're only accurate a certain percentage of the time and I believe the bioresonance is way more able to dig in deeper and see things at a much deeper level. So really using both is an amazing thing because you can come to a really grounded perspective because you have a more complete picture. So we'll talk about this. Okay, so just a little bit of a review. Oh, and then yellow is, I was just asking Ryan about this, but I get the sense, and you guys tell me if you think that I'm wrong, that yellow is sort of emerging in my experience to be more of a warning uh, phase. I, I, you know, we always said things under 600 were not problematic, but now I'm thinking that things that are in the yellow zone are kind of, um, they're on their way. They're sort of on their runway to being issues. Whereas things that are in green tend to be more balanced. So I'd love feedback on that. Do you guys feel the same way that things that are in yellow are not entirely balanced and so instead they're sort of on the way of being um, out of balance and so it's a good sort of an early early warning zone. You guys have any opinion on that? Certainly let me know.
okay, <laughs> no opinion. All right, so we'll just keep rolling here. So now a review of and Sharon from uh, Canada says, I agree. Thank you so much for your feedback. I appreciate it. So a review of physiology. When you eat something with a carbohydrate, a bagel, a muffin, uh, a teaspoon of sugar, a Coca-Cola, anything that has a pasta that basically is carbohydrate in nature, that is going to break down to simple glucose in your body. The glucose goes from your stomach into your bloodstream. Once it is in the bloodstream, it is literally, and you, you know it sounds strange, but it is literally like a, a five alarm fire. It is an emergency once it is in your bloodstream. The body is on a major mission to get that stuff out of the bloodstream and into the cells where it can actually utilize the energy. You can't utilize it in the blood and interestingly enough long-term sugar glucose floating around in the bloodstream actually causes damage, what we call glycosylation. It makes the blood cells more protein-like and, and it can destroy the vessels. And that's what we call advanced glycation end products which is down here at the end under 123, AGEs. AGEs spell the word age, and if you see someone who's looking like they're aging, then they're probably under the um, effect, they're experiencing the effect of advanced glycation end products. So it's really, really um, um, interesting. So we, it's an emergency to get the blood into the cells. Now, of course, what shuttles the blood, the, sorry, the glucose from the blood into the cells? Insulin. So if you eat even, you know, ice cream is interesting because they have to over sweeten ice cream in order for it to, all of the, with all of the fat, for it to actually also taste sweet. So they sort of over sweeten a cold frozen product. So you eat some nice, you know, scoop of ice cream and your pancreas just flies into, you know, major emergency mode and it is pumping out, and I don't mean to ruin your ice cream experience, I do apologize, so it's like gushing out all of this insulin, you know, insulin, 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 and granted the fat does slow down the release a little bit, but nonetheless there's still a lot of sugar in there, so boom, 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 trying to pump out all this insulin. The insulin opens the door like a lock and key, so it opens the door of the cells, and now we allow the energy to go inside the cells and we now start storing the glucose. Well, there's a lot to be said about this entire topic. In fact, what we find with ketosis is we're finding a much more efficient energetic process with um, sort of, it sort of would be like burning a really clean fuel as opposed to burning really dirty gasoline that has a lot of really um, stinky and poisonous like byproducts. So we're finding out the ketones and being in ketosis is a much cleaner way to get that energy um, to the body, which is mostly through fat, which is really, really interesting. And that this whole thing about losing, using glucose actually is not as efficient as we thought. That said, as we age, if we don't consume enough minerals, our insulin doesn't work as well. If we gain weight, then we are on the road to a vicious cycle where the adipose tissue or fat is actually blocking the, the fats, the um, insulin receptors. So the more people gain weight, just by the nature of the weight gain, they become more insulin resistant. So it becomes even more necessary for them to curb that carbohydrate consumption in a big way. So what we're seeing today, because the obesity numbers in the past between 10 and 20 years have just gone from absolutely awful to catastrophic. It, it is unbelievable. It's like, I, it has to be the genetically modified foods, unfortunately, combined with a sedentary lifestyle, and it's just hit a, a perfect storm. And, Really back in the 1970s and 80s, early 80s, you were really hard pressed to find a lot of people who weren't fairly slender. And even, you know, going back even to the 70s, I do remember, you know, being in school, almost every kid I was in school with was, was pretty slender and it was really rare to have 
sort of a, an overweight classmate. That's, that's what I recall. I don't know if any of you guys recall that. And now it's almost if you're slender, you're almost, it's just the opposite. It's like you're the exception. And just everywhere I go, I mean, if I go to a regular supermarket, then the amount of, you know, like a Safeway or a, you know, maybe a Costco, the amount of people who seem to be overweight is just, it just seems like it's the majority. So anyway, we have this massive increase in diabetes as a result of people being overweight and then they become insulin resistant. And then it really does become a vicious cycle, you guys, because if you're insulin resistant, it makes it hard to lose weight. The presence of insulin causes us to store things like fat. And so if your insulin is up, it's going to feel like you're trying to roll a big boulder up a very steep hill and that the process of losing weight is nearly impossible. So, and this is what people are experiencing every day in greater and greater numbers. So if you can help them with bioresonance, at least by raising their awareness, you will be doing them a wonderful service. So let me explain some of these to you um, in terms of their meaning in general and of course their meaning on this particular, um, for this particular client and then we'll compare it to their labs. Um, so as a matter of fact, maybe we should just talk about the labs first. So let's um, actually take this down for a moment. And let's just talk about the labs. This is what, what people would um, consider to be what the, uh, the real deal, the science, right? Because bioresonance could still be um, considering, um, you know, that this is just, you know, hokey, hokey pokey, that's not real. And um, Patricia says, what about Dr. Esselstyn, no fat diet and heart disease? Don't worry, Pat. Uh, Patricia, I'll come back to that. That's an important sort of there are two sides of the same coin. And Patricia, I think it, it sort of happens to be um, what works for people at any given time. Um, so Dr. Esselstyn's information is really, really good and it does seem like there, I seem to have two populations. One population, particularly of younger people, I guess I'll talk about it now, under the age of 40 do really well on a low-fat vegan diet. And I think it's because they're more active and they have more muscle mass. And that totally proves itself out. Once people hit 40 and women are in their fit, late 40s and 50s, what I notice is then they I do better with the approach of autoimmune paleo or ketosis. So I think I finally have cracked the code. Um, that said, people should try a low-fat vegan diet and see if it works for them. But unfortunately, I was seeing those folks become more insulin resistant and also not losing weight. So I had to switch them over to the ketosis plan. But the, there is that's why the ketosis class is going to be really fun, Patricia. Definitely invite you to um, look at that class and maybe jump in there because there's such a really interesting nuances about the about this if you um, avoid most of the nuts and mostly nuts because they're high in omega-6 not the seeds are more high in omega-3 um, and other oils that tend to spike up the omega-6s then they can what I'm trying to say is that they can have some oils they can't have an excess of animal products, but they don't seem to be affected by coconut oil. They may be affected by palm oil, so I try to err on the side of MCTs with coconut oil. And then we have to keep the calories down. We have to keep the tendency to, be, to get into excess down. But what happened for my 45s and over on an Esselstyn-type Esselstyn, diet is that their insulin was still basically and their blood sugar was still too high. So this is the other thing you guys, when your insulin is high it will make you more hungry. So then those poor deers that were trying to lose weight and you're telling them to eat less, the thing is that they're not satisfied unless they eat twice the amount of serving that you're recommending for them. So if you put them on the ketotic diet, then it sort of really is a major appetite suppressant because it doesn't spike the insulin. So 
it's a very fascinating topic that we have to sort of adjust in real time not being too dogmatic to any one book or any one teacher and be flexible in the moment. In fact, even the women who are in ketosis, they need, and this was information was pretty good that um, the guy from Bulletproof Diet, David Asprey, actually brought this to my attention. It is true that women who are in ketosis for a long time, even after a couple of weeks, they need to do at least one day of carbohydrate refeeding where they get a little bit of rice in some MCT oil or a potato or a sweet potato and then they do that and then they go back into ketosis. That seems to help their hormones, helps to keep them more balanced, they sort of feel satiated, they just can't do that all the time or they're going to start to gain weight. So I hope that answers your question, Patricia. That is a really good question and it's one that I've honestly struggled with quite a bit until I finally figured out that people who are younger can really are able to manage the blood sugar in general better but when women get into their 40s cuz and men too boy and just today people are just getting creamed because there's so much estrogenic influence and it's making it darn hard for people to keep these carbs even though the Esselstyn plan sounds like it would be really really good is the keto OS power still recommended for ketosis? Yes, it is, Janie. And again, um, I can send you the link and I'll be talking about it more in the ketosis class. These are exogenous ketones known as um, beta hydroxybutyrate. And since we talked, they've actually made these things better. They've got 2.1 and 3.0. They have some of them have less fat in them. Some of them have less sodium, and it, it, I find that it's a, even more effective for people than it was when we originally talked. Okay, what about older people, like, like 50 and over? Yeah, it's probably the ketosis, Patricia, is going to work better for them. Um, as we age, you know, our pancreas loses a lot of the steam that it used to have, and we also, I think the other thing about getting older is that we lose muscle mass. Well, your muscle mass is the biggest user of glucose. So again, insulin resistance is almost inevitable as people get um, 50 and over. As unfortunately, unless you're a really, really well-trained athlete with very good muscular um, definition, and you know you keep your muscle, your BMI really, really good. Okay, so and we can talk more individually if you have more specific questions. But now, this is really important, you guys. Let's talk about some of the markers for blood sugar, and then we're going to get into the genius. So this number, glucose, is your fasting glucose. So before you go to bed at night, to get your, you're going to get your labs done the next morning. You stop eating at 8. Then at 8 o'clock in the morning, you can go and get your labs done. It's called a 12-hour fast. This number right here in glucose in milligrams per deciliter used to be all the way up to 130 and 130 was the marker but they found that so many people were insulin resistant at like a hundred so now the number is 99 and if you get over 99 uh, two times in a row you are said to have diabetes type 2 I mean it's really scary because I see a lot of people who are approaching 99 very very quickly and they've got to quickly cut their carbs and I try to get them into ketosis, do the MCT oil, because this is not good, you guys. This is, when you start seeing this, this is probably weight gain and they're on their way to um, not good stuff here. So we'd like to see this more in the seven, maybe 75 to 85 to be optimal. And I'd like to retest this person after they've made the changes and see this. And certainly bioresonance can help. You know, when you're on your genius, um, running frequencies for your pancreas, running p frequencies for insulin, running frequencies for blood sugar balance, all these things would be really, really helpful. Now, remember a little thing about German new medicine. If you study German new medicine, it's all about all these things related to, and this is a little bit Louise Hay too, but remember that diabetes and sugar things are not deriving the sweetness from life. So being more playful, being more light, taking time for play and joy, that's probably all 
contributing to helping you to balance your blood sugar as well. So I have sort of a side note there. Now the, the hemoglobin A1C, this tells us how glycosylated the blood has been um, over the past three months. So they usually use this as a control for people who have diabetes to see if they've been controlling their blood sugar. So even if it's normal the day that they come in, uh, we can actually tell that, well, but they haven't been controlling it for the other 59 days before they came in for the test or something. So here we have pre-diabetes 5.7 to 6.4 and then diabetes over 6.4. Um, so this is if um, the blood sugar stays very high for a long period of time, it tends to change the vessels in a very negative way, which is called glycosylation. That's something that you don't want. It's like your vessels are becoming stiffer and that's, that's not good. So, but you can shift it back just by controlling your blood sugar. And so the less glycosylated your blood is, the better off you are. Now a minor point here that I'm going to be talking about in the kidney class is about uric acid. And when this uric acid number starts to creep up, it's not totally related to blood sugar, but it is not unrelated to blood sugar. So first of all, uric acid has to do with, this is a byproduct from your kidney, so it could relate to your kidney health. But um, uric acid also tends to creep up when you have too much fructose. So if you have high fructose corn syrup, or even if you're just a fruitaholic and you do have a lot of fruit, if you are not genetically able to handle a lot of fruit, then your uric acid, you're going to see it start to creep up. So you may have to reduce your fructose because it's not a good sign either for blood sugar or for kidney health. So you'd want to correct that. Unfortunately, you know, the, sh the fruits today are just, you know, tens and hundreds times as sweet as they were 50 or 100 years ago. So generally I support the consumption of fruit. I think it's a good thing. This is just sort of a side note about that. Now in addition to the blood sugar creeping up, we see something even more concerning. And that is the triglyceride number. So here are your triglycerides. They should be between 0 and 149. And here they are at 197, you guys. This is not good. So this is a sign, in addition to the 93 fasting, that we are just not doing the kind of metabolic uh, balancing of our sugar that we need to. When these triglycerides are high, it's either too much sugar or too much fat. And these triglycerides are being dumped into the vessel um, where they'll eventually be processed by the liver. This can also lead to what's called NASH, which is non-alcoholic ste steatotic liver or AKA fatty liver. So gosh golly gee willikers, we've got to, now this actually, somebody's trying to be more vegan and unfortunately just got to go back and say, you know what, I'm actually going to recommend ketosis for you because we got to cut those carbs down, we got to get the calories down, we got to get the weight down, um, and we got to get the insulin resistance down. Okay, well I'm not going to go too much into this other stuff. We do see cholesterol is just a scoosh high. Not going to talk about that right now, but triglycerides not good, blood sugar not good. Um, oh, I rotated that. I didn't mean to. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, and then one more, a couple more things here. These aren't too problematic, but I noticed that this is actually doubled from the last time this patient was in, and the triglycerides have literally doubled. They were about 75 last time. They've gone to. They've more than doubled. 197. So I should have put the before and after here too. So that's not good, that's not good. And then this isn't bad, but it was like half the amount last time. It was much closer to zero. This is the amount of inflammation you have in your body. So now the other thing about blood sugar is if it's out of balance, that means that um, you're gonna have more inflammation in your body. So again, this whole carb thing, more, in, more inflammation. I do, I feel like as a people, um, especially if you guys know anything about the glia brain and the fats in the glia brain, some of you guys on here know about that. I feel like we're switching to a more fat-based type of a diet, but of course you have to be eating the right fats and you can't eat too much of them. You, know, you have to have a healthy liver. Um, but that's just what my 
clients are showing me, you know, that this um, less carb thing is, is the real deal for people who are older. Anyway, so we've also got homocysteine here. This is another um, form of inflammatory substance in the body. People who have more homocysteine tend to get Alzheimer's. So we do see that this looks pretty good. Um, see, this, the C-reactive protein now is in the average, whereas it used to be low. And then the homocysteine is 5.2. It's not bad, but we certainly want to keep an eye on it. Okay, now let's go to the genus and talk about, now this is the same person now being tested on the genus. Tell me what you think. We've got, when we test them for the special panel, which is a customized library you can get, adipose blocking insulin receptors, they are overweight. Hemoglobin A1C, interestingly enough, it was not high, but I'm wondering if this is picking up it, that energetically it's an issue. Chromium deficiency, that's a reason for people to be insulin resistant, interestingly enough, and the one right below it on the same score is insulin resistance. See a relationship here? So uh, definitely getting them on a good chromium supplement would be a really good idea because it's going to help their insulin to work better even though they also need to lose weight. The problem is if their insulin is high, it blocks their ability to lose weight, so they're in a vicious cycle. So the chromium can help to get the insulin down and hopefully help them with their weight. Then we sort of see in the yellow zone here glycosylation. So we didn't really see the glycosylation with the hemoglobin A1C, but we probably want to watch it, you know, because it, it could, could be happening. Um, you know, if, we, if that blood sugar gets up, they're probably approaching metabolic syndrome. They're probably becoming more leptin resistant. The more insulin resistant you are, the more leptin resistant you become, which means that, and this is interesting, you guys. So we tell people, you know, eat until you feel satisfied. Well, literally, if you're insulin resistant, it doesn't matter if you get one portion of the meal, two portions of the meal, three portions of the meal on your plate. You will eat what's on your plate without really knowing if you're satiated. If you have insulin resistance, you lose your ability to know when you're full. And this has to do with the leptin. This is another reason why people proceed. You see them one year at the holiday, they're a little overweight, you see them the next year at the holiday, my god, what happened? Um, this isn't because of a morality issue or even because they're indulgent, they're just losing their own physiological ability to know when they should stop eating, it's quite amazing. Now a little confusing here, it doesn't say blood sugar dysregulation, that's odd. It doesn't say C-reactive protein, although it's kind of borderline. It does definitely say inflammation. So some of these things are a little confusing. Homocysteine was not high, but maybe this is picking it up energetically. And I do think there are probably advanced glycation end products going on. So what is the general picture here telling us? Again, they sort of it sort of matches the labs in a lot of ways. And that the same thing that the labs are kind of telling us that we're in early stage here and there's still a lot that we can do. So part of the plan should be balancing um, a little bit every day with these frequencies while they're working the lower carb, maybe modified ketosis, maybe taking some exogenous ketones. Um, this could be very, very helpful. Okay, so remember we would go here and then let's sort of mix that up a little bit and see what comes out. And interestingly enough, these are all medium and low. Okay, so this goes back to my original um, supposition that this is early days, right? This is sort of the early stage. This is the warning time when you really can do the best work, right? Before it's pathological, before they tell you you need to take insulin. You know, you want to take some action now and really see those labs come down and see the numbers on your genius start to get better. Okay, do your triglycerides and cholesterol not go up on a high fat diet? Surprisingly, you can get a little higher in cholesterol, but you're going to see the triglycerides come down. Um, you have to be very, you almost need a doctor or health partner to help you with a ketotic diet. And we say modified ketotic because I see people do better. 
um, not having to force themselves to go so deeply into ketosis, but significantly cutting the carbs, increasing the fat so they're more satisfied. So JD, the thing here is to not get into excess. That's the thing. And people who are insulin resistant, they tend to do excess because the insulin spikes up their appetite. And people who eat a ketotic diet, all of a sudden their appetite starts to die. And they're really surprised. They can go the whole day and they're like, oh my God, I guess I could eat dinner. It's a totally different experience than thinking about food the entire day and being really, really driven I'm feeling almost a bit tortured by always needing to eat so frequently. And so they have a lot more clarity of mind, a lot more satisfaction in their life, a lot more ability and motivation to exercise. So what you're telling people, what are you telling people who have problems processing fats in the liver and have sugar issues? Well, there's tons of supplements that we can get to help their liver to work better so that they can process the oils. But you know, something interesting is that coconut oil is not processed by the liver. Olive oil is processed by the liver. Vegetable oil is processed by the liver. Um, you know, your, your safflower oils. But coconut oil is not processed by the liver. It bypasses the liver. That's why it gives instant energy. That's why MCT oil is used by athletes. Is it all, Catherine says, is it all physical or can there be emotions that are involved in weight gain? Does the genius address the emotional problems related to blood sugar irregularities? Yeah, absolutely, Catherine. So, you know, testing the emotions along with this is a really good idea. And remember, I talked about the new German medicine. So in the new German medicine, they say that blood sugar imbalances is not extracting the sweetness from life. So you definitely could make a lot of good connections. There's a lot of overlap though. And I do think that people can be, certainly they can be stuffing their emotions with food, but I see it as there's a real, there's a crossover. Like obviously if you don't address one, then you know, you're leaving something out. We do, I mean, Definitely balancing the emotions is really, really great, but there's so much going on there with biochemistry. Um, for people who are eating too many carbs, um, you know, that can be causing them to feel depressed. It can be causing them to feel lethargic. It can also be causing them to feel obsessive about food because the insulin is spiking up their appetite. So they feel, uh, you know, even if they have an inclination to stuff to overeat, it's going to be exacerbated um, by the high carb diet. Um, so one thing plays into the other. So they could be more successful with even starting to look at their emotions if they get on a diet where it doesn't keep triggering that desire to eat. They can maybe get some space from it and some clarity. But by all means, you could take the emotions panel and just put it you know, everything that's high at the top and everything that's high on the bottom and just incorporate it into this. Um, that's a very easy thing to do. So you have all of your good things in here. And I do have some things in the libraries. Um, let's just see what I, I'm trying to remember what I have in here. Because I have this cool frequency treatment that you can look at too. Um, there is some emotional stuff in here. So I derive the sweetness from life, healthy insulin sensitivity, happy pancreas, happy metabolism, optimal hypothalamic function, glucose regulation, lipid levels, cells receptive. Yeah, this isn't so much emotions, but it's a good one nonetheless. So you certainly could go to emotions under mind. and test all of the emotions and then just include them. I really wish that animation was taken out as a default. Someday, hopefully. All right, so then take their top five emotions or top 10 emotions and then, you know, it depends on if you even want to share these with the person. You certainly could let them view them if you wanted to. Sometimes it creates resistance where they're like, I'm not disgusted you know, that type of a thing, um, or, you know, not, 
Yeah, it's totally up to you. You know, when you do it yourself, it's a it's a self awareness thing. When you do it with another person, sometimes it can be too revealing. So certainly a lot of emotional stuff coming up here. And then you could go down to your blue emotions and see if those are coming up as well. So you've got all of these coming up too. I don't get too into analyzing it. I, I think that it's hard unless you're a mental health professional to sort of correlate it all together. Um, unless you are trained in some type of emotional release therapy, then certainly you could. All right, so then you can take those emotions and then again you put them into progressive insights. So now, Catherine, you'll sort of be cultivating more of your connection uh, between the emotions and the problem at hand. So um, empathy, shame, worry, sorrow. I'm not really sure the emotion of horror. Do you guys know what is that? The emotion of horror. Like I think of a horror movie and being, I'm not really sure that's an emotion because I think it's really fear. But nonetheless, um, so then these things have actually balanced and gone down to low and certainly the emotions actually are at a higher point here. So this is a good opportunity to balance them. So the genius doesn't address the problems related to blood sugar in particular, but it's good to balance them all together. And certainly with the progressive insights, you can do that. It's going to cycle through and help them to balance. All right. So other questions? Other questions or things that you want to talk about, ideas um, related to blood sugar. There are certainly other things that you can check related to blood sugar and some of the organs and things related to the metabolism. Um, you know, my panels aren't the only way, you know, the only way to test. It's just one, one idea. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and let's look at the organs, for example, and see what's going on there. Hmm, interesting. That's still running. Fascinating here. All right, let's go to body, and let's look at the organs and see what's in here. All right, so can't wait to see this. <clears throat> All right, so liver is really the culprit. That's interesting. Um, certainly, liver balances out the glycogen, so that's you know something to. And the pancreas would be the number one thing because the pancreas regulates the insulin. I have to admit, this is not my most favorite animation up here. This picture, I think Ryan maybe could have picked a better one. It's a bit much to take in visually. If you have any feedback, you certainly could send that to them. Um, thyroid, stomach, bladder, kidneys, lots of stuff going on here. Brain, heart. I'm sort of sometimes left with the feeling, and again, I'd love f feedback from you guys, that the, I don't know how to say this, but the algorithm is a bit too aggressive. In other words, it's picking up more things than it needs to. And I'm curious if you guys have noticed the same thing. I mean, I realize that that my patient may have issues with lungs, heart, brain, kidneys, bladder, stomach, thyroid, but I'm, I don't know why, but more than even the um, infinity, I just, I feel like it's a bit, it's like a bridge too far here. We're folk, there's too much stuff at too high of a level. Um, do you guys feel that way, or what do you think about all these things? This makes this person seem like they're on death's door, and I know that they're not, so I'm just a little bit curious what you guys think about that, that it's almost just a bit slanted towards um, sort of over-expressing imbalance. Okay, so bladder came up at the highest, and along with that horror, there it is, so bladder came up the highest level, and that's interesting, and then liver and kidneys. 
So pancreas was only a moderate concern. That's kind of fascinating. Interesting to think about. But certainly pancreas is something we think about with blood sugar, for sure. All right, let's see what you guys think here. Uh, Sandy says, I agree. Kathy says, I agree. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> JD says, I agree. And Wendy says, I agree. Sharon says, I agree. So you guys all maybe just shoot a note to Ryan and tell him you think that there's a bit of an overexpression of imbalance, that somehow the algorithm is sort of picking up more than it should be or at a higher level and if it kind of would cool down a little bit and pick up things more at the spectrum um, at the ends to sort of reflect what's really going on with the person. It sort of reminds me when we had too many zeros showing up. Um, this sort of reminds me of the same thing. So something still needs some refinement. Okay, and Catherine says, Don't, do you know why I would run myself for about 45 minutes drilling down, etc., and the numbers get lower, then come back to the mid-40s? I've gotten 64% in a session. I'd like to be higher. So I, when you're drilling down, you're sort of resetting things over again. So every time you drill down, you go back to the beginning and you start right at the beginning. So that's, you know, a bit of maybe of a disappointment for some people. But every time you retest this, you set the rectification back at zero. And, you know, certainly it would be awesome if Ryan could maybe, I don't think that's anything he's going to be able to find a solution for any time in the near future. So it's really um, better to rather than gauging the rectification numbers and being so focused on those, which I think worked in the infinity model, with this progressive insights, I think it's better to gauge that you're having fewer and fewer items come up as high. So one of the ways that I know that I'm sort of done is I've sort of drilled this down enough over, you know, five different iterations. So I've gone to 15 minutes. Sometimes I've gone to 36 minutes. By the time I'm at 36 minutes, because I might be, you know, doing other things while I'm doing this, I notice I only have about three or four items that are left in the high area. So if I've drilled it down enough, what I observe is that it, it's let fewer and fewer things that are um, rated as high. And then I sort of feel done with that group of frequencies. And you certainly can give, you guys can give me your feedback and let me know if you think differently about that. All right. Sharon says, good to know it's not just me. The blood tests showed a doubling. The blood tests showed a doubling. I don't know what that means. If heavy metals show up in blue at about 5%, is that a good thing? No, it is not a good thing. That would not be good. That would be, wow, I don't know why you think that would be good, but there might be confusion about the number system. So blue is deficient or underfunctioning. The more blue something is, the lower the number. The more there's chronicity, the deeper it is, um, and that's certainly something to consider. You, we have, I don't know what we have here. Um, electrical sensitivities, chemical sensitivities, vitamins, minerals. Um, you might have seen heavy metals in the today's stress. Or some panels here, I think, could really be improved based on the new system. But what you want to do is you want to. Um, Add stuff to a client. I would suggest getting some of my panels. Catherine would be happy to share the list with you. But you go to this little list if you get the 100 panels. And then you add. Come on. Heavy metals is such a big issue these days. I just see more and more of it, unfortunately. And we want to do heavy metal exposure, heavy metal exposure treatment. And we go OK. We associate the libraries. And then I don't think that they drop in right away. I think we have to go all the way back to the beginning, unfortunately. Let's see. Oh, no, there they are. I am wrong. So good. So they're added. So we hit begin analysis. Hoping to get Ryan to put all of these here 
actually in alphabetical order. So right now they're not in alphabetical order, they're by priority and it's sure is darn help. It is darn challenging to find them if you have a lot of them here. So then we go to heavy metal exposure and we hit scan. And so Catherine, this would be the way to sort of double check that number and dive deeper into it. So we see ethyl mercury and mercury in general. So there definitely is some type of mercury exposure. Did you know if you break one of those um, CAFL bulbs in your home, you'll expose your whole home to mercury. So don't break one of those things in your home. Isn't that nice that they're selling you a sort of a hazardous thing that could break and expose your whole family to something? It seems like that probably shouldn't be available for you to purchase in your home, but what do I know? Uh, barium, cesium, tungsten, gadolinium, those are sort of odd heavy metals to be high, but nonetheless, thallium, we're finding thallium in people who eat a lot of kale, really weird thing, really weird finding. Aluminum, you know, those can come from the suspicious springs in the sky, nickel, antimony, tin, cadmium, yeah, interesting, yeah. Mm. Cadmium is usually from smoking, batteries, it could be in the water. I don't know. Again, I think that this is overexpressing the exposures based on what I know. Some of these don't look quite right. All right. So, yeah, hopefully nobody's buying those CF CAFLs anymore, but uh, some people still have them in their home. So, um, you guys, definitely check out the email that I'm going to be shooting out. It's either going to be done late tonight. I probably will go out in the morning so you guys will get it at a more convenient time. And the two classes that are going to be this month is one about kidneys, kidney tonics, really cool things to keep your energetic Chinese medicine kidney energy healthy, as well as the best herbs to cleanse your kidneys and help you to eliminate metabolic waste, keep you from getting, you know, cankles and <laughs> bloating and all of those things. So you definitely want to know how to do kidney cleanses and keep your kidneys healthy, as well as maintain your kidney jing energy. So that's one of them, and then the other one is going to be on ketosis, talking all about blood sugar, and a really like a wise way to do ketosis that doesn't feel too deprivational, that doesn't give you heart disease, we don't want to be eating sides of beef, and um, really incorporates the healthy oils and helps you to keep your liver healthy so that you can process those oils. I'm here every Monday at 4 o'clock Pacific, and I would love to hear your feedback, so if you have something you want to tell me about the training, or about the genius, then go ahead and send me an email, ariel at awakentotalhealth.com. I still really appreciate your referrals and you do get all of the affiliate income um, that you'd get by purchasing through Ryan, but I become your customer service person. Thanks again, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the training and I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care, everyone, and be well. Bye-bye for now.